A couple of weeks ago, I compared the brand new Sony XM5 headphones against their predecessor, the XM4s. But that wasn't enough, was it? Lots of you wanted to know how the XM5s compare against the AirPods Max. And I've got lots of thoughts. If there are two pairs of headphones that are guaranteed to get all of the attention on this channel, it's Sony's Over-Ear XM series and Apple's AirPods Max. I can see why. Over the last few years, Sony has built a name for itself as the leading provider of noise cancelling headphones. The combination of brilliant noise cancelling, all day comfort, that awesome case, and a sound that is both great out of the box and even better for some users when EQ'd, makes for a great buy. And as for the AirPods Max, well, they're Apple's over-ear headphones, aren't they? Which means they're gonna get a lot of attention. They're also very expensive and have some very strange product features. But how do the XM5s stack up against the AirPods Max? It's a really good time to make this comparison because the price of the AirPods Max is tumbling fast. We'll start quickly with price. The XM5s retail in the UK for £379 or $399 in the US. The AirPods Max, on the other hand, still have an official retail price of $549, but you really don't have to spend that much on these if you shop around. I've heard of people grabbing the AirPods Max for as little as £350 over here, but on average, you're probably still gonna pay somewhere between £370, $370 and £450, which places them just within reaching distance of anyone who's considering the XM5s. Regardless, these are both an expensive pair of headphones. It's a lot of money to spend. So let's look at how they compare in the most important areas. As noted in my original XM5 review, these aren't an uncomfortable pair of headphones, but Sony does appear to have reduced the padding all around. As a result, these get less comfortable slightly quicker than the XM4s, although you can still comfortably wear them for longish work sessions. However, they pale in comparison to the AirPods Max, which are so comfortable. I just think the combination of the way the ear padding sits on top of the ear cup, unlike the XM5s, which kind of sit within it, and that fantastic canopy at the top is what makes them far more comfortable than the Sony's. It's also nice that you can remove and replace the ear pads on the AirPods Max, even if the replacements are Apple expensive. There is one big difference though, which is the weight of the AirPods Max compared to the XM5s. Apple's headphones just feel unbelievably heavy after you've been using the XM5s for a while. It actually really surprised me. However, unless you're switching between these two headphones regularly, you're not gonna notice that, to be honest. And I've never really sat among the crowd who think the AirPods Max are too heavy. The XM5s are just the lightest headphones I've ever placed on my head. And for some users, that will be very important. So it's definitely worth bearing that in mind. When it comes to design, this really is a matter of taste, but there's no escaping the fact, I think, that the AirPods Max feel far more premium than the XM5s. Apple has predictably opted for aluminium with their headphones, hence the weight, whereas Sony is using plastic recycled from automotive parts. In my opinion, the AirPods Max look and feel like the price you pay for them, whereas the XM5s, as great as I think they look, do feel a bit cheaper. So battery life is such an important aspect of headphones, I'm always going on about it, and right off the bat, I can confirm that there is literally no competition between these two. The XM5s win hands down when it comes to battery life. There are two reasons for this. The first is that you can actually turn these off. For some unfathomable reason, Apple does not let you turn off the AirPods Max. They simply enter a kind of sleep mode when they're not in use. Now I can say this with complete confidence after many, many months of using these, that this does have a detrimental impact on the ownership experience. Of all the headphones I have in the studio, and there are loads, the only pair that I have to consistently charge are the AirPods Max. The second thing is that you have to charge the AirPods Max via Lightning, which is a stupidly ancient Apple-only charging method. These should have been USB-C like every other pair of headphones I have in this studio, and pretty much every pair of headphones on the market. Ironically, these both offer about the same amount of in-use battery time. It's just that idiotic inability to turn these off that makes them such a pain in the back. Side. When it comes to controls, the AirPods Max do regain some self-respect, thankfully. That's all thanks to this, which is the crown, which can be used to play and pause your music and adjust the volume. It's intuitive, tactile, and just fantastic. The other button here simply switches between noise cancelling and transparency mode. Simple, no faffing around, great stuff. The XM5s, on the other hand, opt for a combination of buttons and touch control. There are two buttons, one for power and the other for switching between noise cancellation and ambient mode. And then the touch controls are reserved for playback functions. And they just remain 
completely pointless in my opinion. I just don't see the point in touch controls on headphones. Give us proper buttons, please, Sony. Right, the case, let's do this really quickly. This is a headphone case. This is not a headphone case. This is very, very big, admittedly, but it does protect your headphones. This doesn't do anything. It doesn't have any redeeming features whatsoever. The XM5s win this particular battle simply because they come with a proper case. Regardless of what you think of the size of it, it does protect them properly. This doesn't do anything. We've all laughed at it. We've had a bit of fun with it. Now it's time to get real, Apple. The next AirPods Max need to have a proper case, please. Thank you. The XM5s are better noise cancelling headphones than the XM4s, but how do they stack up against the AirPods Max? Well, they lose, I'm afraid. The AirPods Max make the world go noticeably quieter when you put them on your head. There's not a huge amount in it, but Apple does appear to have beat Sony at their own game. And I think part of this is down to the better seal that I can get with these ear cups. So again, your mileage might vary, but in my testing, the world was quieter with these compared to these. The only downside, if you can call it that, is that there is more of a pressurized feeling when you're wearing the AirPods Max, which I know might bother some people. Although again, in isolation, and without A being these two headphones, you probably won't notice that. The AirPods Max also win big time when it comes to transparency mode. There's nothing quite like it on these. It filters in just the right amount of outside world and crucially means you can hear yourself perfectly. Now onto sound, and as always, I tested both of these headphones out of the box and without any EQ treatment. The reason I always do that is because I want to hear what the manufacturer thinks we should hear. EQing these headphones for this purpose would completely skew this review because sound is such a subjective thing. I tried out four different tracks on these headphones, the four that I always turn to at the moment, Unfinished Sympathy by Massive Attack, Sledgehammer by Peter Gabriel, Breathe Again by Pop Evil, and Easy On Me by Adele. Starting with Unfinished Sympathy, it's a much brighter representation on the AirPods Max. Despite this, both headphones deliver similar amounts of detail, which is quite nice, even if the bass is a little bit more defined on the AirPods Max. And this dynamic track reveals that both headphones have a fairly similar frequency response, bar that harsh top end and slightly scooped mid-range on the AirPods Max. Onto Sledgehammer, which sounds and feels much more airy on the AirPods Max, which I think is again due to that top end boost, but it works nicely nicely on this particular track. Both headphones deal very well with the instrument separation on Sledgehammer, but I think this is a case where the top end makes the track feel slightly more alive on the AirPods Max. The XM5s, by comparison, feel a bit more boxy, and I think this is another one where you can hear the pronounced mid-range on the Sonys. On Breathe Again, the mid-range feels slightly too scooped on the AirPods Max, which is unusual for me to say, because I tend to like that kind of sound. The top end as well is slightly too bright on Apple's headphones for this track, compared to the XM5s, and that kind of makes this raucous, chaotic track sound far meatier on the XM5s. Adele's vocal on Easy On Me sounds far more natural on the XM5s, and the same goes for the piano, which is as mellow as it should be on the Sonys, compared to a rather harsh representation on the AirPods Max. Also, the bass part and the gentle kick drum also cut through far more easily on the XM5s compared to the AirPods Max. Again, a little bit like Breathe Again, Easy On Me just sounds nicer on the Sonys. I've said in the past that the AirPods Max sound like they've been tuned to sound expensive, and in isolation that works pretty well, unless you're an audiophile, of course, but when pitched against a more neutral sounding pair of headphones like the XM5s, that top end in particular is just a bit too much. For me, the XM5s are a more enjoyable pair of headphones to listen to, it's as simple as that, and I don't think they'd introduce fatigue quite as quickly as the AirPods Max. It's also worth bearing in mind that you can EQ the XM5s far more precisely to get the sound you want. The only way you can do that with the AirPods Max is via Apple's EQ presets, which won't please tinkerers. Although I never use headphones like these for calling, there's no escaping the fact that the AirPods Max win this particular battle hands down. It's important to note that the XM5s aren't bad calling headphones, and they do indeed beat their predecessors in that regard but it's that subpar ambient mode that kills it for me. The transparency mode on the AirPods Max is unbeatable, and it makes them pretty much the only over-ear headphones I'd ever turn to to make telephone calls. The XM5s come with a bunch of extra features which are nothing more than nice-to-haves in my book. Auto play pause when you take them off your head, multi-Bluetooth connections, and support for LDAC high-res audio on Android are nice, but they're not game-changing. 
However, if you're in the Apple ecosystem, nothing can beat the extra utility offered by the AirPods Max. Instant automated device switching is one such benefit, as is the ease with which you can set these up and pair them with your Apple devices straight out of the box. But the crowning glory, I think, is spatial audio and Dolby Atmos support. Now, the XM5s have their own sort of version of spatial audio with something called 360 reality audio, but it's nowhere near as impressive as Apple's. And for the uninitiated, spatial audio enables you to watch your Apple TV or content from pretty much any Apple device as though you're sitting in a movie theater. It's brilliant if you've got young kids who are sleeping or if you simply want to keep yourself to yourself. I really can't convey how brilliant and useful spatial audio is. It's one of those things that you really have to hear for yourself. But trust me, the Sonys cannot compete in that regard. Like every headphone comparison, these two pairs of headphones excel in very different areas. What works for one user won't work for another, and you're always gonna to have to make compromises whichever pair you go for. That's why I can't tell you specifically which pair to buy. The solution, therefore, is to work out which areas matter the most for your use case, and that's why it might be worth using the chapter markers at the bottom of this video just to go back and check on those individual points to see which pair might suit you best. But if I could only pick one out of these two, it would be the XM5s. This is mainly because of the charging convenience, the case, and also the fact that I prefer the sound. However, if you want to save a bit more money and find out how these compare against their predecessors, the XM4s, keep watching for a link to that video.